Tonight, we will gather in the House chamber to listen to the President's State of the Union address. This will be the first time in Barack Obama's presidency that he delivers a State of the Union address to a Republican-led House and Senate. Some see this as a prescription for gridlock. Others, including myself, see this as an opportunity for the executive branch and the legislative branch to work together to actually get some things done. There's recent precedent that shows this arrangement can work. In fact, it's a period of our history where an Arkansan played a huge role. During the final six years of Bill Clinton's presidency, he faced the same situation as our current president. He worked with the Republicans to reform the welfare system. He worked with the Republicans to balance the budget, an accomplishment that has not been repeated since. He worked with Congress not just to go around them. Now, I don't expect us to always agree. There are some stark ideological differences between President Obama and our Republican majority, for which there is really no agreement. Without one side or the other abandoning their principles, and certainly I don't intend to do that. I don't see the President doing that either. What I do hope, however, is that he try to find common ground with not only us, but the American people. When that happens, work gets done here. Even in the last Congress with a Democrat majority in the Senate blocking almost everything in an effort to protect President Obama, we still had flashes of bipartisan agreement. We agreed on a new farm bill that ensures the continued safety, affordability, and reliability of our food supply while achieving real savings in federal spending. We reformed the VA to address the horrific wait time that our veterans face while trying to receive the health care that they earned. And we passed a spending agreement that brings distress, discretionary spending to its lowest level in almost a decade and has a number of provisions that adhere to conservative principles. Both parties did not get everything they wanted in any of these instances, but the final product was the result of individuals coming from different starting points and arriving at the same finish line. That is what the American people want, but that takes an honest commitment from all parties involved. One way the President can show he is really, really ready to work with Congress is to abandon his misguided plan to circumvent Congress and grant amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants. I anticipate that President Obama will try tonight, once again, to defend his actions by blaming Congress for not passing immigration reform. The truth is, everyone in this chamber is eager, is eager to tackle immigration reform. The President is acting unilaterally because he knows Congress does not his support his amnesty proposal. He knows the final product of our work will not include that provision, so he intends to go around Congress to get his way. And now the President seems intent to dig his heels in deeper by threatening to veto our efforts to defund his actions. This is just one of the veto threats President Obama has already issued just weeks into the new Congress. This start doesn't bode well for bipartisanship. I hope tonight's speech is light on the veto threats and heavy on the areas where we can find common agreement. I think those are plentiful. I really do believe that that is possible. A fair and simple tax system, creating jobs, making Washington more efficient, effective and accountable. These are the issues Americans want us to address and areas where compromise is possible. That's where our focus should be on what the country wants, not what the president wants. If everyone comes to the table ready to work, I think we can surprise everyone with what we can achieve. But that takes presidential leadership. And Arkansans showed it can be done. President Obama should look to his example for how to move forward and to work with the Republican Congress.